The Mystery of the Emerald Necklace Oh mom, I miss you. I miss you. I can't do this alone. I don't have a passport. I don't have a ticket. And I don't have the courage to do this alone. I don't have anything that I need to get to Myanmar. I know how to get there, but what do I do after that? Wait, I know how to get there. How did I know how to get there? I could hear my mother's words as we began our adventures to Paradise Island. Elena, let's pretend that we are going to Myanmar, to Paradise Island. I was always delighted to go. We always had so much fun on our adventures. We would plan everything together down to the last detail. I then realized beyond a shadow of a doubt that she had been preparing me for this trip for as long as I could remember. I became more and more frightened. Myanmar, the emerald necklace, my father, his life being in danger. What was the connection? You must only take one bag with you. In that bag, place the shoe box with the shoes containing the necklace. My thoughts stopped suddenly. The necklace. Was it even still there? I never opened the box. I went to the closet and took down the shoe box. It was still there. I was relieved and a strange calmness that I hadn't felt in a very long time came upon me. Mom was the best at planning. All I needed to do was to trust in her and to follow her instructions. Now I was able to prepare for the trip. The water from the shower poured down over me like a gentle rain. Mom was no longer here, but I had a father who loved me. And even though I didn't know how all of this would work out, I had to try to save him. I had to try to save him. I followed all of mom's instructions and packed only one small bag. The shoe box with the shoes containing the necklace was put in first. Then my laptop, along with only one change of clothing. I followed all of mom's instructions, except one. It was just too difficult to destroy the thumb drive. So I put it in the same secret compartment as the necklace and zipped up the bag. Already knowing that sleep would not come to me, I dressed in the appropriate clothing for the trip and propped myself up on my bed and waited all night. At 6.45 a.m., I found myself sitting on the front steps with my bag over my shoulder. The taxi arrived right on time. As I stood up, the driver jumped out. Are you Elena Ray Lynn? Yes, I am. Do you need help with your bags? No, 
Thank you, I only have one. He opened the back door for me and I got inside. He seemed to be in a big hurry. As he started to drive, our eyes connected in the mirror. He gazed at me for a few seconds and then picked up something from the front passenger seat. I think this belongs to you, he said roughly. He handed me a thick brown envelope. As I reached for it, our eyes again met and he shrugged his shoulders. I don't know what's going on. All I know is that I'm supposed to be home in bed. I've been working all night. I'm exhausted. That envelope must be important. So why aren't you at home in the bed? I asked, trying to connect his exhaustion with me and the envelope. Well, he began to explain, I finished my shift, and as I reached my house, a man came up to me. He handed me this envelope and offered me money, a lot of money, in exchange for making sure that you made it to the airport and received this envelope. I looked down at the envelope. I sure hope it's nothing illegal, he continued. I don't need that kind of trouble, but for that amount of money, I took a chance. I looked at him. Did he tell you his name? The taxi driver gave me a look of disbelief. Are you serious? Look, girl, I didn't need a name, nor did I want one. Let's just get you to the airport. His voice was shaky. He paused and then asked, Well, aren't you going to open the envelope? I slowly opened the envelope. Its contents didn't at all surprise me. It held a plane ticket, a passport, and a visa. There was also Myanmar currency. I breathed a sigh of relief as I also saw detailed instructions on exactly what to do once I arrived in the country. We arrived at the airport quickly and the taxi driver was very relieved to open the door and let me out. Standing in the airport security line, I began to become very nervous. Would the shoes really be enough to conceal the necklace? I saw two security guards who seemed to be looking my way. Were they watching me? I breathed another sigh of relief when they gave me a warm smile and wished me a safe trip. After boarding the plane, I began to relax and my body reminded me just how long it had been since I had had any sleep. And within a very short time, I was sleeping soundly. So soundly that I didn't notice when he boarded the plane. The long plane ride finally ended, but my journey was far from over. I knew from our adventures and the instructions that I had received that I still had a long way to go to get to Paradise Island. It was an eight hour train ride to get to the boat that would take me to the island. And again, I slept. And again, he was there.
Before I arrived at my destination, I again read my instructions. After arriving on the island, go into the shop and buy some hiking boots, a red jacket, and a red backpack. After you've changed clothing, put your traveling bag into the backpack. Go next door and rent a bike. Follow the trail for two miles. When the trail splits, go left for another two miles. You will then see the cabin. Go inside. The log cabin was beautiful and its surroundings relaxed me. I knew immediately what I needed to do. I needed to find a hiding place for the necklace. I moved forward in the direction of a closet. Though I had never been there, I knew exactly where to hide it. This exact cabin was in our adventures and I knew the secret hiding place would be there. The closet was filled with men's clothing. Did my father live here? After assuring that the necklace was safe and secure, I also secured the doors and then went upstairs to take a quick shower. Why was I so much at peace? After all, I was on an unfamiliar island. I stopped and laughed to myself. Unfamiliar? No. My thoughts continued. I was here to save my father, but from what? I needed more clues. I decided to take out the thumb drive and watch the video once again. Since my thoughts were much clearer, Perhaps I could detect something else. I rested my head on the table as she spoke. You must only take one bag with you. In that bag, place the shoe box with the shoes containing the necklace and pack very few pieces of clothing. Keep that bag with you at all times. I watched it over and over again, but nothing was different. The footsteps behind me were swift and soft. Well, well, well. I jumped up from the table. After all of these years, I was beginning to think there was no hope of ever recovering that necklace. Young lady, you are the answer to my dreams. It was only then that I understood why mom insisted that I destroy that thumb drive. But now it was too late. Who are you? How did you get in here? I was horrified. As I felt a breeze and heard the rustling of the trees, I realized that I had become too relaxed and had forgotten to check the windows. Whoa, young lady, you're not in a position to be asking questions. I'm the one with the questions, but I have only one. 
Where is the necklace? I quickly glanced at the door. Could I make it in time to get out? He glanced in the direction of my gaze. Don't even think about it. But before the words were even out of his mouth, I darted toward the door, quickly unlocked it, and ran. From a distance, I could hear the sound of his steps behind me. But even louder than his steps, I could hear my mother's voice. Run, Elena. You must be the fastest runner. As I ran, I remembered something else about our pretend adventures to the island. Elena, go right. Always go right. So I went right. I was the fastest runner by far, and he didn't see me turn. My feet moved like lightning as I traveled along the path that was so familiar to me. It was like a dream, a familiar place that I had never visited. And so I knew that it would be there, hidden amongst the trees. In our adventures, it was our safe haven, and I knew that now it would be mine. I ran towards it and entered. I made it. I made it. I was the fastest runner. Mom, I was the fastest runner. Your mother trained you well. Even though the unfamiliar voice made me jump, I wasn't afraid. Papa!